Today's uh, different. If you can't tell, um, if you walk through the cafe, you probably already know it's going to be a little different. We've got a packed house today. Uh, if you don't know me, yeah, right? It's fun. If you don't know me, for those of you that are visiting or, or newer or uh, here with family for a special day, uh, my name is Lauren. I'm one of the pastors and elders here. Uh, I'm not going to have a normal teaching today. I thought way better than me doing a short lecture of any type. Uh, I want to I want to share a little bit uh, of what God's doing with a good friend. And before we do that, I want to set it up. We've got four days left in our Awaken experience, our 30-day fasting and prayer experience that we're partnering with seven other churches, including Redeemer, that we just prayed for. All of our churches, including Redeemer, including us and these other six, we're working our way through the Gospel of John. If you have read the Gospel of John one or more times this month, as we've encouraged everybody to do, then you know the very last line of John's Gospel says something to the effect of all this stuff that I wrote down, read, are so you will believe. Jesus. So you will trust and follow Jesus. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. We're not here to be religious. We're not here to jump through hoops. Uh, we're not here to be good, nice, moral people. We are here because of Jesus. Uh, we're on this journey because of Jesus. He is the only hope we have. Um, we let each other down. You and I let each other down. Family, friends, we, we just, we're, we're fallen people. We're sinners. And Jesus is good. Jesus was there at the beginning. He's been through everything we've experienced personally, all of our different stories. And his arms are open wide. Come, come back to me. Trust me. Follow me. And, uh, and the reason we come together on a Sunday morning is to, to, to dive more into that, to celebrate that together. Today, we're going to celebrate some things that Jesus has done. So I want to go ahead and invite uh, Doug up. I um, want you to hear just a little snippet of some things God has done, and really what everything we're talking about represents. So would you do uh, me the favor, us the favor, of giving a warm welcome to Doug Marchand. I think it's on. It suddenly got hot in here. He suddenly, he suddenly just suddenly got, got hot. flushed. Yes. Yeah. Um, just pretend, what do they say, that they're all in their underwear or something? Like that. Yeah. I'm working on that right now. <laughs> Uh, if you don't know Doug, Doug is uh, a good friend. He's a good friend to me and, and a bunch of you. And in fact, before I say anything, why don't you just give us a brief intro. Who is Doug Marchand? Tell us about what you do for a living, your family. So I, uh, I own a construction company, a roofing company. Uh, I have a Proverbs 31 wife. Sometimes I say Proverbs 32 because she's better than Proverbs 31. Oh, well done. Uh, wow. Yeah. I got to use yeah. that one. Yeah. I have... Uh, uh, a son named Blake, a daughter named Hope, and Gabby. Uh, most of us live in the same household, compound, uh, Marshan compound, slash uh, estate. Been coming to the state, yeah. <laughs> We've been coming to uh, my family has been coming to Colonial since 2008. My sister and my brother introduced me to, uh, which I get to see him baptized here, by the way. Uh, that's probably a good picture of us. You do a great job of marketing. I see Marshan construction everywhere I go in this town. Now you know if you didn't know uh, There are $8 before. signs that I leave there, and people use them for yard sale signs. Like <laughs> <laughs> well, I want you to share, first of all, um, who were you before coming to know Jesus? Give us a little back background on what life was like, where your heart was. Who were you before you encountered Jesus? Okay, just... Uh, my mom's in here, by the way. Uh, so <laughs> probably in 1993, 94, uh, I was introduced to uh, methamphetamine. Uh, it basically took over my life really fast. Uh, in a, just a short year later, I was cooking methamphetamine. I was everything that went with that. You know, pornography, uh, staying up all night, looking out the windows, making sure no one's looking at me uh, to... Every day driving down the road, you just have to be worried. You know, going two miles under the speed limit because you're worried about getting pulled over and getting busted. Or, it was just, it, the devil had me right where he wanted me. Uh, it was a mess. Lying to my family, lying to my friends, uh, only caring about myself, money, and drugs. And, you know, and that was it. Didn't really care about who I 
hurt in the past, you know, who I was hurting, my family, things like that. It just didn't really matter. It was all about the addiction. And uh, like I said, the devil had me right where he wanted me. I was lost. Well, and it all hit the fan uh, in what way? So it hit the fan. Uh, he tried to get my attention several times, but uh, the time that got me was in uh, 1999. Uh, I was arrested for manufacturing methamphetamine. Um, in, in my adult life, I'd never been in trouble at all, um, but the jury uh, convicted me, and they gave me a 95-year sentence, first time I'd ever been in trouble. 95 so, years. So you're 140. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moses. <laughs> in all seriousness, I mean, that had to just talk about taking the wind out of your sails. Oh, it was a shock. Life uh, sentence, basically. Oh, yeah. Yeah, life sentence. Uh but honestly, looking back now, and my family knows this, I've told you this several times, going to prison was the best thing that happened to me mm. uh, besides being saved, without a doubt. Mm. So. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, behind bars, um, what, what, this is where everything changed. Yeah. So what, what, how in the world did you come to know Jesus? So I didn't even realize this aspect of it. Uh, until Lauren and I were talking, but um, so I was raised Catholic, never read the, read the Bible, nothing against Catholics, just uh, never read the Bible. So I'm in county jail in Vernon, and this guy was in there, um, and he had killed his wife with a hammer, literally with a claw hammer. Uh, wow. And he came to me and then started talking to me, hey, why don't you read this? Why don't you uh, uh, read the Bible and check this out? So I'm in there, and that's, that's where it started. I started reading it, uh, then probably what's called catch chain to the to catch chain to your unit to your where you're going to be at uh I, I just stayed interested in that and then there was a program called kairos kairos ministry so in 2001 uh at the all right unit uh that's when you know i truly gave my my, my life to christ uh, put everything down um baptized within six months out there at the all right unit and that's when life changed for me things uh that's when it got better. What it, in prison, it got better. It, that's amazing. Um, before we talk about you obviously getting out and life being different out here, what what was what was different for you following Jesus, learning who Jesus was and how to trust him and follow him, still there in that environment? Well, in prison, there's still there's still room for nefarious activities. Believe me, um, there's things available there that. Uh, are available out here you know they, they drink hooch uh, different things uh, so I pushed myself away from that and I remember there was one time and I'll just be uh, blatantly obvious there's no women around except guards uh, at that time they they had uh, magazines right and it was probably about a year after I was saved I say this because journeys happen over time the Holy Spirit delivers you from things when you're ready if you're listening uh, so I remember we were sitting on the pod, and the pod is where the, everybody's living at. And I was sitting with these other two gentle, other two inmate gentlemen, slash, and we were looking at a magazine, uh, a dirty magazine. And uh, I remember a couple of my Kairos brother came in on the pod. A couple of your Christian, Christian inmate friends, friends from the yeah from the, 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 the church at All Right. Um, and then something told me when I seen them, I was like, "Oh, I get, you look at this book. I'm not looking at it." And right then, I was like, "Okay." Well, I, I, it, it was just life-changing events like that. Things are starting to click yeah. for you. Yeah, things are starting to click. Like, I'm, I'm really not supposed to be lusting. I'm not supposed to be looking at essentially porn. I'm not supposed to be thinking about this. Mm. I'm supposed to be going vertical. Uh, so that was a conviction for me. Mm. And then you got out, surprisingly. I mean, without getting into the details of that, that that's just a gift from above. That oh, absolutely. 95-year sentence turned into yeah. how long were you, did you end up staying behind? About years? nine years. About nine years. Until what year were you released? Uh, 2008. 2008. So 2000, uh, December 8, 2008, I uh, was released. Um, my brother and his wife were sitting right over there. We're coming to Colonial. Uh, so I came to Colonial and never looked back. Um, I... So 2008, that's 15 years ago you came to Colonial. Yes, sir. And if I'm right, we didn't talk about talking about this, but you sat in one section, and this lady named Gina yeah. sat in this other section. I in sat the right same, back there. I think Gina sat over there. In the same 
service. That's a totally cool story. For too, four right? years. Yeah. Never met. Yeah. She's your wife now. She is. That's crazy. How cool is that? We don't promise that. We don't promise that'll happen. No. For anybody, just to be clear. We met online. Um, long story, but basically we met online. And as we're sending back emails back and forth, we're like, where do you go to church? I go to Clooney. No, you don't. You must be lying to me. You know, and, <laughs> it, 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 I, I didn't know her. She didn't know me. Um, but anyway, it's, it's God had a plan for us. So. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, let's talk about, man, as best you can, give us a picture of what growth has looked like for you. I mean, that's 15 years ago. Introduced to spiritual family. Well, you had that through the Kairos ministry. I don't want to dismiss that at all. But a new spiritual family, uh, baby steps of growth, toddler steps of growth, young believer steps of growth. What what did what did, what have you seen God do? The work He's done on your heart, on your worldview, on your values, any of that. Give us a give us best you can a picture of that growth. That wow, that's change. a lot. I know um, that's hard, but so I I, I think that uh, just for me, not everybody else, uh, but I was going in this door and out the door for, for quite a few years. Never really did get involved. I did stay involved with the Kairos community. Um, but for me, when I spiritually started growing was when Gina and I actually got together. I had a helper. We were, we were pulling the same way. Uh, as soon as we basically got in a small group, it's immensely uh, mm-hmm. what God has done. Uh, I've been able to witness... Like I said, my brother getting baptized here, uh, Gabby, Blake. It's it's so encouraging that I'm able to look back and, and see what God has done. Uh, now, like I said, I could have never imagined that where I'm at now spiritually. I never would have thought about it. Yeah, uh, but we just we have that bond, the the community here at the church. Uh, I, I no longer. I'm not addicted to methamphetamine. I don't have to look out my windows anymore. I don't have to worry. Uh-huh. I, I mean, I drive 10 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour over now. So, so I, mean, I mean, I'm not worried about it. I'm not getting worried about getting pulled over. Uh, and what, it, one of the craziest things is it, it's so weird. The people that I was involved with back then, they just, I don't know if it's because I was prison so on, but they suddenly disappeared. And the people that I know now, uh, the people that I've chose Maybe because I've cultivated those relationships, the people that I'm with now they're they're different than those other people were. So I just feel like God has put those people in my life mm-hmm. to to grow with them spiritually, in, uh, communistic, not com- what am I trying to say? communally or communally yeah, yeah. Uh, word grow together. Not communistic. No, no, it's a real yeah. No, no, no. Just to be- no. <laughs> I love that though. I've watched you live it. I've watched. I've been here. Uh, this summer will be five years for me, um, and I've only. I, mean, I feel like I've got just this short window into your life, but I've I've watched you for the last five years, and God is amazing. God amazing. is incredible. He's so good. He's so good. I got it. Uh, Doug would never say this, and and rightfully so would never say this, but I have watched you and Gina. I've watched you love people in a way that I want to love. People. I've watched you live like this. We talk a lot at Colonial about don't live like this, but live like this. And ours. And it's I, you live it. No. And and I want you to know I'm not giving you any credit for that because I know that's from the Lord. That's not our natural wiring. Our natural not wiring my old self. is to build our own empires, you know. And you, God's blessed your business, and you have lived like this, and you have blessed people. Um, and I just want you to know you make me want to follow Jesus more passionately and, and trust him more. And there's a reason, if you didn't know this, um, Doug has gone from um, a joke about, you know, real life, a real life Walter White to um, he's gone from where he was to he's one of our spiritual fathers of our church. Doug is one of our elders now. How cool is that? How cool is that? That's God's redeeming love. Man. Yeah. Like, just like Lazarus, you talked about last week or the week before. Yeah. He's dead. He's alive now. Same, same exact. Thing. I love those moments with you. We're, we're, we're. I think there's three or four of us in a room, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, John, you know, John I mean, That's that's me. I'm Lazarus. He's like passionate about it. Um, okay, so let's shift gears. 
today's a special day for us as a church. It's certainly special for several individuals that we're going to baptize. It's a special day for you as a dad. Tell, tell us why it's a special day for you as a, as a father. So, uh, give a little bit of backstory. Uh, again, this is totally God's story. So, when I got out of prison, uh, 2008, it wasn't, but uh, hope you could give me the details on this. She was, I didn't know I had a daughter at that time. When I was living in my addiction, my alcohol and stuff, uh, I, I had a relationship with someone, with Hope's mama. And uh, so, we went out of God's grace and we did our thing, and I didn't know that I, you know, she got pregnant. Well, when I got out of prison, I was informed that, hey, you know, you got a daughter, right? So through 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 God, she ended up getting married, and her husband got stationed uh, in London. So he reunited that relationship. We we got to we got to mend that relationship. It wasn't shortly after that that she uh, she moved in with us. Uh, so Jean and I have got to spend the last five years with her. Uh, she's now thirty one. Um, and just like most 31s, uh, have grown up, never was introduced to Christ, just, just like myself. Uh, but we get to baptize her today. So, how cool is that? I love that. I'm excited for you, Hope. Uh, I'm excited for you and Gina that y'all get to be in the tub with her. I can't wait. Uh, I told Hope that the, this, as many people is going to be here, there's going to be a trillion times that in heaven clapping. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, one last question. Um, as now a follower of Jesus for 15 plus years, and you've seen God do so many great things, what what encouragement do you have uh, for hope for, for others that are taking those those first steps, those baby steps as a, as a new follower of Jesus? What What encouragement do you have for new Christians? I don't know if it's encouragement, but it's more of, I, I want to say advice, but for me, um, even though when I was baptized, of course I was baptized in prison, so it's a little bit different, but even though now that I have a group like Lauren and, and a few other men that are pouring, we're pouring into each other all the time. I have a small group. Uh, I have a, like I said, Proverbs 32 wife. Uh, we are going to, you are going to have some, some things happen in your life. You may, you may diff- not. Difficult things. What you difficult mean. Yeah. I mean, there might be some things that happen. We, we lost a son uh, not three years ago. Uh, that that causes questions for you. They're like, is God real? Or, I, I just I just want to know that right now um, you're going to be on the valley when you come out of that water. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, on the on the on the mountain when you you're going to have valleys, um, but don't do it alone. Uh, that's what the devil wants. The devil wants you to to be a disgrace. The devil didn't want me to come up here and say, you know, it was 25 years ago, I was, you know, smoking dope, looking at pawn and all that stuff. The devil didn't want me to do that. Uh, so we got to share our burdens with one another. Um, if anything else, if you don't have that, we have that here at Colonial. Uh, there's several people that we are able to just do life with. And I can't tell you enough that don't do it alone because it, just like that coal that in the fire, barbecue pit you take that coal away it, you're gonna die uh i mean yeah. you you gotta gotta do that with with some people absolutely i'd say that's the most important thing if, if i were to give that's a great word we, we talk about um you know as elders and as pastors we talk about what programs are we going to provide what what steps can we and it's not it's not to make us busier does anybody need more busyness no it's it's because of what you just said why do we do this thing called rooted why do we invite people into groups? It's it's because we believe what you just said. And yeah, I, I tell people, I mean, I just told my, we shared this at my small group last time. So my perspective changed a lot. Um, so there's, honestly, there's, in this room, the only thing that's permanent is our souls. Each, each one of our souls is permanent. We're going to go one place or we're going to go another. So I try to concentrate uh, when the devil tries to pull me away. By the way, I try to concentrate is it permanent? Because we're, we're only here for a short time. Um, so we got to concentrate on permanent things. On things that matter. Yeah. The only things that matter. Yeah. Absolutely. At the end of the day, a thousand years from now, that's yes. all that's going to matter. Yeah. So. Thank you for sharing. Thank Doug for sharing with us today. <laughs> Love you, bud.